Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Mailbag. I believe it's um, been requested a few times that I do another one of these. It's been a while. Anyway, we've got a parcel that's come in. Let's check it out. I know who it's from, but I thought I'd open it with you guys uh, because I'm nice like that. And this particular uh, sender is all the way from Romania. Yep. What have we got here? We have got something that's been repackaged. It looks like it's gone through customs and they thought it like there was something dodgy about it. So they've repackaged it. I'm not sure what they thought was the problem with it. Um, but maybe it looks like a bomb or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, the, the lid's fallen off and yeah, we've got like a little Allen key here. Be careful we don't lose stuff. Okay, then we got here. Let's pull this out very carefully since it all decided to fall out. That's empty now. And let's have a look. Oh, it's a Eurorack module for that. And there she is. It is the VCZ, or if you're from a different country, a VCZ3A. This is an oscillator. This is a VCO. It's an analog oscillator. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. This one is a faithful recreation of the VCS3. And there's two oscillators, two different types of oscillators in the VCS3. As you know, this particular one is the A type, and we've got the special type of um, knob here which has kind of like two positions and this little thing here is a, a little locking mechanism from what I believe so that locks it it's like a break and yeah, that will not move now so this is your tuner there we go so let's have a look at the second module and bring that one out slowly so you've got the A and the B and now you guys can see the difference between the two just had a quick read up on the feedback modules website which I'll link in in the description of this video below these type of knobs are actually called a Borns B-O-U-R-N-S multi-turn potentiometer and these particular versions of the oscillators have that uh, potentiometer on them there is a cheaper version that you can get with just the standard knob on them and functionality is the same in terms of the oscillator will function the same you just don't get that uh, extra sort of VCS3 style potentiometer on it another thing to mention too with the uh, oscillator A the oscillator A has a variable shape sign and saw waveform um, so with the shape you can vary these two and you can also use control voltage to vary those shapes as well the oscillator B uh, has a triangle and a pulse waveform before we chuck these into the Eurorack uh, and mount them and everything let's have a closer look at the electronics and just the design that's gone into these and you can see these are extremely well made with a lot of through hole componentry on it. Um, and you can see just the level of beauty that these have gone into. Another thing to notice too is there's these two LEDs here that, well, there's actually more than two, that these light up underneath the through hole sort of PCB where you can actually see the LEDs you'll see that when I plug it in let's have a quick closer look at this one as well one thing about the feedback modules is they're exceptionally well made they are made in Romania fantastic serial number two Serial number two, look at that. Fantastic. 
All right, so here they all are in the Eurorack case, and I've got it plumbed into the Mordax data so that we can check out the uh, oscillators in a sec. What I want to do though first is just remind everyone what a VCS3 looks like. That is the VCS3 from EMS, and a lot of you guys will remember it as the sort of tabletop type synthesizer with the pin matrix down the bottom and all the oscillators and filters and things up the top. The thing we want to look at though specifically is the oscillators of the original VCS3. And if you're looking at oscillator one and two, they are slightly different. Um, oscillator two and three are the same. So we won't need to worry about oscillator three for now. And that is why he has, or feedback modules has done oscillator A and B. So oscillator A should replicate oscillator one here in terms of that you've got the sine wave and the sawtooth, I guess. Uh, and oscillator 2, in his case oscillator B, is the square or pulse wave with the triangle wave, as you can see there. So let's go back and actually check that out. So what have we got? We have a sine wave and a sawtooth, and we also have a triangle wave and a pulse wave or, or a square wave. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we are going to have a listen to what these sound like, and we're also going to look at all the functionality that we've got. Um, firstly, let's uh, make sure she's all tuned. So we're going to go into Mordax data and set up tuning. Go into this one, press the C note. Okay, and that should be oscillator A. And we just need to just slightly fix the tuning here. we can fine tune it with this. Now that is going to be real that's really really like tight to move and I guess you can adjust how tight it is with this little control here but that's that's spot on. All right, now we are going to now do oscillator 2. Okay, it's pretty close. Just want to get that down to right on the knocker there. Okay, sorry, you weren't hearing that. Okay, that's oscillator B. All right. Right, we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our oscilloscope. We're going to check out the differences. Firstly, let's have a look at the shape. So as I adjust that shape, you can see that changing shape there on the Mordax dart. I don't know why it's flickering like that. I need to muck around with the settings here. There we go. You can see the different shapes as I adjust the shape control, which you can see me doing just over here. So what that is doing, oh, and we probably should put this across to mix. So what mix is, from what I can work out, mix is a mix between these two waveforms here. And then the obviously the output is mix. If you just want that waveform, uh, you can actually select the out, choosing the output. So if I just wanted the square wave, I would just select that and that would sound like this. And the shape would probably pulse width, I guess. No, no pulse width. Okay, cool. So there's no pulse width on that square wave. And then you've got your sawtooth there. And the shape does not adjust anything with that. Does the mix adjust anything? No, so these are just direct outputs of those waveforms. And then you've got the sine wave. And this is adjusting the shape. And 
then let's have a look at the mix. And we should end up as a sign on that side. That's really cool. Now, one of the things you can do with this is um, you can modulate a quite a bit of stuff here. So you can modulate the shape um, and you can have an FM in and the FM control attenuator is just above the sync and then also you can sync your oscillators together. What I thought we'd do is An LFO, let's go with an LFO from something else like the 2HP module. Alright, so there's our LFO. And let's get that into shape. Interesting effects. That's that. Uh, we can try FM. Like any oscillator would do. Let's head on over to the oscillator B and we'll turn oscillator A off. Go to oscillator B and turn oscillator B on. At the moment she's a square wave. <laughs> thing happening a bit better there is our pulse width now I notice that it doesn't go all the way it kind of feels to me like about a five percent so it's not 100%, so it's about 95% or maybe 90%, 5% on each side. Uh, but, I mean, there would be a way to measure that on, on a proper oscilloscope. You probably even may be able to do it on here, but not for this video. This is just a mailbag. Anyway, let's mix this in. So we should be seeing this now merge from a pulse to a triangle. So as I bring... Let me get the shape of this in the middle. Okay. That's a proper square now. If I bring that mix to the left, that should slowly turn into a triangle. There's your triangle. Now one thing I notice is that when you get to about here, Tends to be quite a common uh, square wave shape that you see on some other synths, and you find that has a very nice bottom end.
that sort of square. Just backing that triangle into it a bit. You get it probably around there somewhere. Quite nice indeed. All right, let's put the LFO into the shape. And let's modulate the shape. Now with the um, the CV modulation, uh, you can actually go to 100% and 0% on the shape. So you'll notice it actually disappears. Ready? The last thing that we want to do is we want to set up sync. So let's do that. A saw teeth sign Last thing we're going to do is we're going to check out both oscillators at the same time and make that a two voice monosynth. Nice sounding oscillators, definitely. And there was no effects. It's just straight through into the recording. Hopefully you guys heard that okay. Yeah, so there you go. Nice little mailbag episode for you guys. Hopefully we can do more of those. Uh, we are looking at the feedback modules VCZ or VCZ3, A and B. They're both the VCOs with the born uh, um, potentiometer on it. Um, there is the other version which just has the standard uh, knob potentiometer on it as well. Um, thanks to Feedback Modules for sending those in. Uh, this review is uh, not sponsored by them um, and my opinions are my own. Um, please leave a comment in the, in the comments below if you want to talk about this or um, we'll see you on Saturday for Synth Geekery. Cheers! <laughs>